All right. Good evening and welcome to another edition of um, Import Export Platform Facebook Live from 3 Team First Trade Academy. Um, we we continue from where we stop. Uh, remember, we are discussing understanding export market entry strategy, and the last one we did was plus part seven. So this evening we are looking at part eight. I hope I wrote part eight. I think I wrote part seven. Okay, I'll probably correct it later. Part eight, understanding export market entry strategy plus part eight. Uh, so what we'll be discussing this evening is, you know, before it was, um, we discussed the barrier in the morning. So this evening we'll be looking at overcoming the export market entry barriers. Overcoming the export market entry barrier. That will be our focus this evening. Like I, since we have discussed removal of the barrier in the morning, we're looking at this evening how to overcome those market entry uh, barriers. So let's go through the barrier again. The barriers include communication with foreign units. This is an internal controllable dimension. Uh, lack of export training. There's an internal controllable dimension. Uh, lack of market information. That's an internal controllable dimension. Uh, the documentation requirement, these are all internal issues, internal challenges, internal barriers. Then, uh, still on internal controllable dimension, we have the arrangement for transport and packaging. Uh, we have providing services and, of course, the risk, managing the risk. Then, on the foreign uncontrollable dimension, the uncontrollable dimension of is, is both foreign and local. You remember, we are looking at the export market entry barriers. The uncontrollable dimension include um, foreign government attitude, uh, foreign public attitude, and the trade barriers, the non-tariff trade barriers that the government have put in place, and then financial issues, and more importantly also the fact that there is no assistance from the home government. Now, these are all different issues that constitute barrier to entering an export market. Now, so what we'll be doing now is to discuss how do you then overcome the barrier to entering into expo market. Olugbe mi Oluatosin, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. Adeshion Ola Relay, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. How do we then overcome the export market entry barriers? There are different barriers I've listed. We talked about those barriers in detail in the morning, but this evening we are looking at how do we overcome those export market entry barriers. There are many things that small company can do to overcome any barriers in addition to applying sound business practices, many things that can be done to overcome barriers. And different people have written different things on what you can do to overcome the barriers. Number one is to look to existing customers. Look to existing customers. To overcome a new um, uh, market, to, to overcome <clears throat> the barriers to export market, many companies can penetrate the foreign market by selling products and services to their domestic customer unit oversee now you are selling product to a company locally that company has a subsidiary oversee doing similar thing because you already have relationship with that company locally you can then through that relationship get a buyer abroad you know let me twist this you are an importer you are importing from a company in Germany. Let's say you are importing product like um, battery. But that company you are importing from in Germany, you can also export to that company. So instead of looking for new customers, you are looking to existing customers. Existing customers. That company is selling you battery. You can sell to them. One of the raw materials for battery is lead oil. And lead oil is in abundance in Nigeria. So one of the ways of overcoming that barrier into new market is just go for existing customers. Look for people, your, I mean customers who are in that market that you have relationship with their affiliate in your own country. Or probably in the same country. Now this is like the low angry fruit. And that's why I often say that an importer is a potential exporter. An importer is a potential exporter. If that importer really explore 
the opportunity with at his disposal. If he first of all understood that he has that opportunity, having understood that he has the opportunity, then explore those opportunities at his disposal. An importer is a potential exporter because there are existing clients on the international scene that you can work with and leverage on to be able to get the business started. Number two, make a commitment. Exporting is not a part-time effort. This is one of the mistakes a lot of Nigerian exporters are making. People that have lost money and have issues in export, most of them are part-time exporters. They are not full-time exporters. People just think export is just one side business like that. Like, you know what some people call side also? You know, not a, not a business that should be giving all the attention it deserves. But a business we can just do by the side to make some money by the side. Whereas this is a business helping some nation to be able to become big nations in the world. Big in terms of their output and productivity, not in terms of their numbers or population. Make a commitment. Foreign business should be run by seasoned managers. Foreign business should be run by seasoned managers. If you need knowledge to run business locally, then you need much, much more knowledge to run business internationally. When you are doing your SWOT analysis, when you are doing your PEST analysis, when you are doing all the analysis about the strategy, about the environment, about you do that locally. When you are going to do export, you are going to do that local first. You are going to now add export to it. You are going to now add export to it. Else, that business might not be enduring. So it shouldn't be a part-time business. It shouldn't be a, a part-time effort. It requires extensive research. So a seasoned manager should be hired. So if you are an SME and you can't hire, then you develop yourself. You develop yourself. We have the American Institute of Extended Study partnering with us on executive diploma in export business management and executive diploma in export pre finance. You acquire the knowledge. You get the knowledge. You get the knowledge. You get the knowledge. So that you do it yourself. After all, you are the manager of your business. Number three, seek advice. It looks easy, it looks simple. But more often than not, People have lost money before they get to know there is a help or there's an helper that could have helped them prevent them from the losses they just incur. They could avoid it, but they couldn't because they don't even know that that loss, that uh, risk is there and that that risk is preventable. But some of them walk right into the challenges, into the risk, into the issues. Seek advice. University often offer MBA, often have MBA students who work as consultant on exporting. Some consulting firms, such as uh, the big company like Accenture, provide free first-hand consultation in some countries. I don't know if they do that in Nigeria. But seeking advice is something you want to do. And Trade Invest Trade Academy can render those services actually free of charge to give you just basic advice on what you need to do and know in order to be able to make your export business a success. Seek advice. Seek advice. Seek advice. Seek advice from individuals that have skill on international trade, especially export trade. Seek advice. This is so important. This is very important. It looks like it should be no-brainer. It should be normal. Everybody should seek advice. But I tell you, common sense is not common. Ucheshuku Azi, thank you very much for joining. Good evening and welcome. Seek advice. Number four, use trade shows. Use trade shows. Use trade shows. You know, we've talked a lot about trade shows in the past. And I'm talking about it again. The need to use trade shows. The need to use trade shows. Trade promotional sponsored by government agency abroad draw big crowd. Cost conscious company can send a product without attending. Send your product through someone without necessarily attending. 
There is a training, there is a trade show happening in Cote d'Ivoire from March 27 to March 30th. That's next week, Wednesday to Saturday. That is an awesome avenue for you to exhibit your product. An awesome avenue for you to exhibit your product. Use trade shows. Trade shows gets you easy access to the potential buyers. And you don't know how many barriers that takes off you. You have taken off credibility. Right there. You have been able to demonstrate competence. Right there. You are able to meet with the people and discuss extensively. And probably bond and connect. Right there. You don't know how much opportunity awaits you in the international market. Until you try it. Like I just read, trade shows... It's a good one. If you don't have the money, look for people going that you can give your product to just drop and just exhibit just in case someone is interested. Just in case someone is interested. Trade shows is a big one. Trade show is a very important one. Trade show is, is so important. It's so important. Because, you know, for other strategy, you probably send sample, give someone some But in trade show, you are there your sample is there, you are meeting with a potential buyer and you are discussing with them one or one. Do you know what? Sometimes some people leave the ground of trade show with a deal. Some people leave the ground of trade show with a deal. That means they didn't just come, talk, talk, talk and go. They, they are leaving that place with a deal. They have contract signed already. Why? They were prepared. They were prepared. They were prepared. So use trade shows. Pick market carefully. Remember, we are discussing how to overcome the challenge of export market entry. Overcoming the barriers to export market entry. Pick market carefully. Why potentially lucrative, fast-moving market can turn unexpectedly? Consider customer quality, not just nationality. If a market is growing, look at the fundamental that make it to be appear to be growing. Are they sustainable? Or they can just tank easily? And unexpectedly? Or from the way you can see, this growth is not nil jack. This growth is not fluke. This growth is based on fundamentals of decisions made by the management of that economy, the government. Pick market carefully. Consider the quality of the customer in the market. By quality of customer, we mean the purchasing power. If they are able to buy well today, are they going to be able to buy well tomorrow? Then manage your growth. It takes some time to line up finances and expand an organization to handle export. Many ex small exporters are overwhelmed by big orders. Manage your growth well. Don't be, when you get to a market and there's so much order, also ensure that you don't just go for all the orders coming your way. When you know you can't meet all the orders, manage your growth well. Manage your growth well. Let it be organic. Manage the growth well. Then use letter of credit. This will help you to mitigate the risk. Some first time, exporters ship a product and hope to get paid but sometimes they don't get paid if you are not able to if you are not able to use letter of credit then look for a rep at that destination you know more than 80 percent of trade in the world are done on open account an open account is a payment method in which the buyer is ready to ship the goods and then it pays you afterwards that poses a risk for you, no doubt about it. But you can prevent that risk. You can prevent that risk by using a letter of credit. If you can't get a letter of credit, you can still prevent that risk by getting a rep at destination. Ade Shimon, Ade Wale, thank you very much for joining. Good evening. It's very, very, very important. Very, very important because the rep
can then help you follow up on payment. The rep can then help you look for other buyers. The rep is a potential opportunity to expand and grow that business. The rep is a potential opportunity to grow and expand that business. It's amazing what the rep can do for you. It's amazing what the rep can do for you. It's simply amazing what the rep can do for you. So if you're not able to get letter of credit, then look for a rep to help your destination. Some first-time exporters ship a product and hope to get paid. Sometimes they don't get paid. A letter of credit can protect against default by a weak or shady customer. By a weak, financially weak or shady customers. Then be patient. <laughs> be patient. Many cost foreign customers do business based on relationship. Small business must spend time to cultivate contacts before racking up, breaking up export order. Build relationship. Build relationship. Get to know the person well enough before you begin to talk about big export orders. Patiently grow. Don't be in a hurry. One of the challenges we have in this part of the world is that people want to grow very fast. Sometimes that can become counterproductive. If you have not done your due diligence very well, remember that it's not a local trade when you can see everything clearly because you are in the same country. This is a foreign trade where you might not be able to see everything clearly. Yet, you still want to go ahead. So, be patient. Be patient. Then choose partners carefully. Partners are very vital in export business. Partners are very important in export business. Partners are too, too essential for export business. An experienced freight forwarder at home is crucial for handling your custom paperwork. An inept distributor abroad can ruin a company reputation. So locally, you need partners in the, in the, in the uh, business model canvas that, uh, that is often used, especially when you're trying to set up a business, you have what is called key partners. Key partners. Key partners in this case will be local people you are dealing with and the foreign people you are dealing with. Local people you are dealing with and the foreign people you are dealing with. Choose your partners carefully. Choose your partners carefully. Due due diligence to know the integrity of that partner. What are their values? What do they stand for? Why do they exist? Why are they in business? Are they just there to make money? Or they are there to create value? If they are there to, to make money, I would recommend you run for such clients, for such part partners. A partner you have is always saying, look, I just want to make money. I'm just interested in making money. And he's not interested in creating value, in growing the business, in expanding the business. He's only interested in making money. Run away from that kind of partner, please. That kind of partner can be very bad, can be very dangerous. That means he doesn't cherish relationship. He doesn't cherish the value he's been that has been created. He's only interested in how much he's able to make per time on this transaction. That can be very dangerous. That can be very bad. Remember, remember, it is international trade. You need both partners, international and local. Local, the supplier of your raw material or the product you are exporting. Local, your bank. Local, your freight forwarder. Local, all the other people you are engaging to work with you in your home country. International, you are looking at partners abroad. An agent or distributor. Now, as I round up this evening, I would like to look at international marketing information systems. International marketing information systems. Now, as you go into export market, you are asking yourself some questions. From the macro environment, you are looking at 
the demography of that market, the nature of the economy, the natural environment, technology, politics, and cultural issues in the export market. Then the micro environment, your suppliers, the intermediaries, your customers, your competitors, and the general public. Then the company internal functional areas, the marketing, the production, the finance. All these are part of your input into your process. Now, you are number one, locating information about all this I've talked about. Gathering that information, processing that information, and then presenting that information for usage. So, locating the information, primary and secondary information, internal and external information, you are gathering all that. In the morning, I show you some things. Maybe tomorrow also, I will show you some other things. Online. There are a lot of websites to get this information. Gathering the information, like marketing intelligence, marketing research, and different records about the product and the market you want to go into. Then try to analyze the data. Try to have a good understanding of what information is the data giving you. Probably on the pass chart and buy chart, buy chart. You just want to have an idea of the sense this information is giving you on the market size, of the challenges in the market, of the growth so far, of the factor injuring growth, the political system, the economic system. What are, you have gathered all this information together to take an informed decision about the market you want to enter into. You know what happened? Many people fail to take time to understand the export market they are going into. And you know what? A number of them cannot last. You know, gathering information about your market is one of the best things you can do. Having all the information. Sometimes you might have to interview people in that market who are doing one thing or the other in that market. Potential buyers in that market. Why are you getting information? The more informed you are, the more informed your decision-making system. The more informed you are, the more informed the decision you make. The less informed you are, the foolish your decision. The more informed you are, the wiser your decision. You need information. Information is expensive. Sorry, information is free, but knowledge is expensive. And the difference between information and knowledge is the fact that information is out there, knowledge is inside you. Information is out there, knowledge is inside you. And you want to gather as many information as possible. And the gift of the internet is right there for you to use. Abbas Falakemi, thank you very much for joining. The gift of the internet is right there for you to use. So you have the inform the gift. Of the internet already so you don't have issue with where to get the information the issue is how do i save the information how do i analyze the information let me give you an instance i want to export pap out of nigeria i have the choice of exporting it to Cote d'Ivoire. i have the choice of exporting it to to uk Cote d'Ivoire is very close uk is far away Naturally, I'm a, I want to deal with Cote d'Ivoire. But if I don't analyze the market very well, I might not be able to ship to Cote d'Ivoire profitably. If I'm shipping to Cote d'Ivoire, at what price am I going to sell there? At what price will this product, if I ship it out, at what price will it be profitable? For example, the one we ship out to UK, is profitable at about two pound one pound seventy. One pound seventy is profitable at that level. But you know what? I can't sell that product at that price in Cote d'Ivoire. I can't. They won't even buy it. I need to look for a better way to sell it in Cote d'Ivoire at a cheaper rate in Cote d'Ivoire. That product is just about one pound in Nigeria. Just about one pound in Nigeria. One pound seventeen in UK, probably one pound twenty or one pound thirty in Cote d'Ivoire. What is giving me this information? 
the per capita income, the standard of living of the people, the income level. Are they middle income country, upper income country, lower income country? Where do they fall? And that's what will determine if I'll be able to sell it in that environment. I'm trying to paint the picture in your mind of how you'll be able to get information and use that information to take a decision. By comparing and analyzing. So at the end of the day, you don't already incur cost to go into the market before you realize that you can't sell it. But you must realize that, okay, if I'm going to enter the market, I must drop this price. So the strategy now is, so with that information, I cannot take a decision on my marketing mix. Product pricing. I need to now adjust my pricing. I need to adjust my pricing. And how I'm and that will be mainly in my delivery. Instead of going by L like I do to UK, maybe I want to go by C. But if I'm going by C, then I must be doing reasonable volume. And that might drop down my price. Alright, thank you very much for listening again today. My name remains Dela Imibo. And this is Import Export Platform Facebook Live from 3 Team Trade Academy. See you tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. as we continue the discussion Understanding Export Market Entry Strategy. Good evening and bye for now.